Welcome to Laptop Radio. Today's topic is how mining can secure and stabilize the grid and help decentralized banking and help the unbanked. We have Samuel Risper with us. He is a CTO at SoMiner.io. Hello, Sam. How are you doing? I'm good. Where are you based? I am in Manhattan, New York City. Awesome. Why don't you tell us your story? Yes, I'll just start personally. My background is in mechanical engineering. And pretty much after graduating, I went to work for a contractor for the Department of Defense. A lot of bureaucracy and just working for a corporation that works for the government. And it definitely was a pretty eye-opening experience just getting out of college. And I always wanted to start my own business. A little bit after that, started a company building custom drones and had a successful exit with that and turned that capital into importing cars from Japan, like the Nissan Skyline GTR, the Toyota Supra. Super weird transition, but yeah, I've always been a car guy swapping motors when I was 16 years old and stuff. And yeah, definitely needed it for some of these Skylines motors. They were fast and fun, but I treated them to where they blew up a couple of times, but I was there to swap the motors. So they forgave me. And yeah, in the car dealership, we just had met my business partner and I, Jeremy Siegel, our CEO at Soul Miner. We always built computers and we've known each other since the mid 90s. And we used to build computers back when we were 12, 13 years old and always knew about you know, GPUs, how to tune them, how to undervolt, overclock them. And we started doing that in the dealership, swapping motors on one side of the shop and mining Ethereum on the other side of the shop. Couple of GPUs turned into a couple hundred, turned into a couple thousand. We eventually liquidated all the cars, put it all into the crypto mining. The merge happened. So we switched from Ethereum to Bitcoin, did a capital raise, built a couple of sites out, sold a couple of sites, and eventually got to the point where we could pay investors back, pay all of our debt off. And at this point, we are looking to build more sites because the infrastructure and the site building was what we excelled at. So that's what we're providing for people. That's awesome. And what is Soul Miner? Soul Miner, definitely a lot of pivots and moves with the industry, which the industry like crypto changes so often. But right now we are a site and infrastructure procurement, build and management company. So anything to do with crypto mining, we get a company, our clients from A to Z. We find the land, we build the site, either it be whole barn warehouses or pre-engineered, put containers down or just a big building with co-location space and build that up and get family offices or high net worth individuals to purchase sites. And they just can mine Bitcoin themselves instead of relying on other people. So they can turn a physical asset investment into something that creates Bitcoin and validates the, the network with proof of work. Awesome. It sounds like you are a crypto mining as a service company. That would be it. (laughs) Awesome. That's really awesome. Who had that idea first and what inspired that? It was probably just between Jeremy and I. I think I had a maybe custom computer and, and we both heard about crypto and sort of was a game where you need to buy ASICs from China that you need to trust your money was going to go somewhere. And then I found out that you can actually mine with graphics cards. And at that point we started building and it's funny because we ended up going to ASICs anyway and ended up having to buy from them as well. But we had good partners and we've found uh, a lot of great people that have over in mainland China that, that have helped us procure that. But yeah, it was just, I guess, really a hobby as a kid that just turned into something that really pushed something that I, I wanted to bring back. I like crypto. Validating the network is the, the basis of Bitcoin decentralization is the reason Bitcoin exists and proof of work and spreading out the validation is the best way to decentralize. If anybody has 50% of the network, then they can sway the network one way or the other. When it's decentralized and there's pools that have a couple of percent, a couple of people that mine blocks and it's just spread out more, it secures it. And and there's no outside influence that's possible on it. So it's always been something that I've since hearing about, I have really believed in. What year did you first heard about crypto? I'd say probably mid-2016. What was your first reaction? This was, I forget when Edward Snowden came out with a a lot of his stuff, but I I became skeptical of, I love my country, patriot, love the United States, but with that, everything came out with the NSA and Edward Snowden, and it just, there's a lot of overreach in the government and working 
for the Department of Defense for a period of time, that overreach might have some implications from people that might have ideas that are different than yours or might have not have open ideas of either in banking or in government and geopolitical issues. And they pretty much choose what the country decides. And, and there's not as much autonomy in the banking sector. It's something that has been around hundreds of years and the people that are in it and they don't want anyone else in it. And the federal government can print money as much as they want and devalue a currency. And the United States does a great job. There's some inflation and it's obviously nothing's perfect, but there are other countries on earth that obviously you turn from one year, you're spending $5 on an apple. The next, it could be a couple trillion dollars and money is starting to be used as like paper towels to clean things up because it's devalued so much. Stuff like that can happen and Bitcoin removes that issue. Yeah. I wanted to ask you about when company mines crypto and when you say crypto, is it Ethereum or Bitcoin or both or any other crypto? So Ethereum moved to proof of stake. So there's no more proof of work. So no mining of Ethereum you can stake it, but that's the validation method now. So yeah, mostly Bitcoin. There's a couple other ASICs. We have uh, some hosted clients uh, that do, I think, maybe Dash. There might be some Cas, But yeah, Bitcoin's the definite majority on that. Awesome. How big is your operation? How many clients do you have? I think we've got four clients right now. Where we have 66 megawatts under management. So we focused initially on medium-sized mines, and we're starting to transition that to smaller mines. So we want to do uh, one to two megawatt tranches of either container or building or however it ends up per the client's request. And if a client wants 40, 50, 60 megawatts, then they'll have 40, 50, 60 one megawatt tranches of the build. We have some great partners in Mexico that put together transformers for us, and, and we've worked with them for years. And we can pretty much get transformers in 10 weeks, 30, 40 of them a month consistently, which is sometimes a big bottleneck, especially when uh, we're in a bull run. Having exclusivity with a conglomerate of transformer manufacturers in Mexico, which makes some of the best on, in the world, uh, a lot of the U.S. manufacturers actually build them in Mexico and then ship them to the U.S. Having that and just having the uh, contractors and just internal engineering from everything, it's almost, we've gotten cookie cutter with it. It's high net worth individuals, family offices, or groups of individuals, or an individual that just wants to put something together and, and mine in a one megawatt. We want to open up to everybody so that it's not prohibitively expensive for somebody to get into the industry. And then who are your ideal clients? Who are the people who actually want to have or do crypto mining? Honestly, I'd probably say small government, cities, counties, and then individuals or groups of individuals. It'd be great to really expand to have these sites spread out instead of one big corporation mining all 30, 40 megawatts on our sites, which is happening now. It's obviously, it's great. It, it works out awesome. And technically, we only have one boss on those sites, so it's not too stressful. But I think it'd be better to have in the aspect of decentralization, have a bunch of different entities that have these one megawatt containers or buildings that just to spread the word and show that proof of work and crypto mining can be sustainable, can be fun and profitable. Why would cities want to mine crypto though? On, in a macro scale, just for infrastructure, electrical infrastructure wise, it actually secures and it, it makes brownouts, blackouts less common. For example, a, a city could have a community electrical service, and it, it might be a nonprofit, it might be profit, but it could be tied into the city. There might be some substations with capacity and, and other ones without. And if there's a, a freeze or a heat wave, then everybody's going to be turning their AC on or, or during a freeze, turn their heaters on. And when this happens, there's a big spike in electricity and the infrastructure might not be built out for that. But when Bitcoin mines come in, they smooth out the curve of electricity usage. So a city might literally have a mine that is on during at night that brings the usage of electricity up to what it is during the day. And then during spikes in electricity uh, in hot summer days or really cold winter nights, 
the Bitcoin mine shuts down. So there's just a significantly more consistent curve of electricity usage for an area, which increases resilience for the grid, which means more safety for its consumers or I guess really its residents. And yeah, and there's places where people could die from losing electricity from not having heat or heat stroke from summer not having AC. Yeah. Sounds good. What is your vision for crypto mining? Do you think that the industry will grow or do you think that there's more crypto as a service where there's smaller mining versus larger mining projects? I definitely think there's always going to be the big projects that you know, have deep pockets that can build really big sites, get really cheap electricity. But what I'm seeing over the past eight years I've been in the industry it really was like an accelerated growth of ASICs chips for Bitcoin mining specifically, and it's tapered off significantly in the past few years. So I see the, I guess, chip size and density tapering off to where it gets to the point where somebody at their home next to their router or in the winter when they need some heat, they turn on a Bitcoin mine to create that heat and it gives them money or they just have a Bitcoin mine uh, a miner passively working at their house and it, it just is always running back to the decentralization part i think it'll be a lot more spread out a lot more people will start mining whenever things don't become obsolete as quickly and i see it going back to the old days where people were mining bitcoin with their laptops getting a couple bitcoin a day which obviously it turned from it went from laptops to gpus to asics and I think ASICs, when they plateau more, will it'll go back to that where individuals will be validating the network. Awesome. For an individual who wants to do crypto mining and wanted to use you for crypto mining as a service, what is the range? For a plug and play, ready to go site where somebody just brings in their miners, puts it on a shelf, plugs it in and, and they're good to go. We're seeing around a million dollar per megawatt. And that's the size that we're building. And that's really where electricity prices start to make sense. And then put that in a, a group of one megawatt containers on one single site. And you really start to see the savings in electricity. Yeah, really just to get in would be that million dollars for that one megawatt. But this is why it could be a group or financing is possible. We've actually talked to banking partners that financing would be possible because these are physical assets. These are piece transformers and containers and shelving and, and electrical infrastructure with uh, wire, uh, primary wire, secondary wire. There's actual copper. There's value in the land. This ready to go mine is its value isn't completely dependent on cri the crypto industry. That cost is not as volatile as the actual industry. Awesome. I know that you have eight years experience in a about 14 year old industry. What are some of the more mining friendly geographic locations? Yeah, it definitely used to be China. I think it was two or three years ago, they banned mining. I think they had 65 or 66% of the mining on earth. And then they pretty much banned it. Everyone's been spreading out since then. But it seems like the US, Saudi Arabia, Iceland's backed up a little bit from it, but there's geothermal heat that areas that there's very cheap electricity, but anywhere with stranded gas, you do fracking, which unfortunately the world runs on oil right now. And when they frack, they can actually create a pipeline that you have to flare. And when you're flaring a site, it's just wasted gas coming from earth and you can't stop it. It's just literally just going to be flared. It'll keep ignited and it'll burn into the atmosphere. Uh, a crypto mine can just put a generator on that flare site and remotely mine Bitcoin. So it's significantly more environmentally friendly. You're not just flaring off this gas, you're actually using it in a generator. And uh, after the combustion process, it goes through a catalytic converter and can stop a lot of those harmful gases. Flare sites are all across the world, but I'd really just say the U.S. is taken off with this. And I think the U.S. will be one of the, the top places for miners to come to just for the stability and, and the prices are coming down as our grid gets more, more scared. Is there anything that you wanted to share that I have not asked you? I guess definitely want to emphasize, especially with the, the recent approval of the, the Bitcoin ETF, 
I think traditional finance and just people in general are starting to see Bitcoin as a more legitimate form of, I don't want to say currency or store of value, but just a legitimate you know, almost project. It's not going to take away currency or fiat. It's going to support it. When Swift takes a day or two to, to send something, it costs X amount of dollars versus Bitcoin takes 10 minutes, maybe 20 cost fractions of a cent. Even when prices have gone up on the network with transaction fees, it's still nowhere near what a Swift wire takes. And it's a lot more transparent. You can literally see when it arrives to them. You see when somebody sends it. You can see when the validation hits and the confirmations happen. And it makes it to weird where there's no middleman. The middleman is the algorithm and nobody has control over that. So I just definitely want to emphasize Bitcoin, there is a place for Bitcoin and it's not going to take anything away from anyone. It's just going to support everything. Awesome. And what is one piece of advice that you have for the community? Say, I think in the early day, I say early days, is eight years ago, and there's people that have <laughs> been in Bitcoin for since 2010. And even then, that's not even that long ago. It's crazy how nascent this industry is. But in the early days, when I first was getting into it, it was very community-based and everyone after Thanksgiving would say, oh, I, I talked to my parents. I tried again this year to convince them about Bitcoin. And I was trying to push this and that because I was telling them about how it's decentralized and, oh, do you even trust your bank? And what happens if your bank goes bankrupt? And do you really trust your money unless you have cash in your hand? Is it really yours? And it was very community based and, and it's definitely becoming more, I guess, institutionalized, which isn't a horrible thing. But I think my biggest piece of advice is you can always own your Bitcoin. If you have the private keys, that's your Bitcoin. That's pretty much like holding a piece of gold in your hand or cash in your hand. You own it. You can use intermediaries like Coinbase, Kraken, put on a ledger wallet, which you could own your private keys there as well. But Bitcoin is probably one of the only things that you can 100% own that can travel across the world in seconds. And I, I think that's the thing that we need to push. And I want to see the community really come together and go back to that message. Awesome. Thank you, Sam.